Hi, welcome to the Liquid Sky Show. My name is Gabrielle Wired with Red Dragon Music. And for those of you who know what this show is about, this is about lighting, Liquid Sky, as well as local artists in the area. Today I have with me the C Wired Band. And we're going to just dive right in and talk to Mr. C Wired, singer songwriter in the area. Hi, C. How are you today? Good. Glad to have you. Glad to be here. Okay, thank you so much for being here with us today. So let's just dive right in. Um, I've had the opportunity to listen to some of your wonderful music, and we're going to be talking about several different songs that you have uh, that that you will also be performing and have written. But first, I want to get to know you a little bit. So tell me about yourself and your musical history. You know how how did you get to this point in your life to to do what you do? So I was originally born in the Detroit uh, metropolitan area uh, quite, a, quite a while ago uh, and grew up on a fusion of uh, rock, uh, funk, uh, industrial uh, rock and different types of influences, Americana type influences. Um, played uh, professionally, semi-professionally through my college years and then I ended up getting married, kind of took a hiatus from music, uh, wife, uh, four kids, I uh, ended up moving to Virginia. I actually got involved in, in, in technology and entrepreneurial sales and uh, that marriage uh, didn't work out and uh, I was probably about four or five years ago, I've started about nine different companies um, as an entrepreneur and I'd be, be honest, I was bored and I was like, oh, I could start another company or I could do this and I just kind of had this calling. I said, you know what, I think I'm going to go back and uh, I'm going to go back into music and uh, it's worked out really well. I originally, what I've learned is, you know, obviously the, the age difference there, but what I've learned is um, I'm able now to write a lot about life, a lot of, uh, I've experienced a lot of life, you know, at this point. So I have a lot of material that I can draw upon and that I can, that I can, uh, that I can write about. So I think that's one of the hardest problems for, for there's a lot of really talented singer songwriters out there, but when you're really young, you haven't really experienced a lot of different mm -hmm. things. I've been divorced, you know, affairs, all different types of things. And so a lot of my uh, music uh, comes from that. Uh, I also have a long-term uh, um, uh, successful history and recovery. So a lot of my songs are about the spiritual path and mm -hmm. things that uh, I've experienced going on. So there's some adult uh, life songs out mm -hmm. there, life experiences. And there's a lot of my own personal journey uh, spiritually as I've evolved on this earth here. Oh, awesome. And uh, so what would you say would be were your musical influences? And most people, you know, listen to music in, when they're younger and there's some particular artists that really speak to them. And so who would you say were some of the main influences for you that, uh, that you draw upon or that you, that you felt you loved and that inspire you? And, we, you know, and the, style. the standard answer is there's too many to mention. Um, I will say this. I'm predominantly a rocker, mm -hmm. um, but more in the ballad. And I write more in the, I guess it'd be the classic 70s, 80s type mm -hmm. of sound. So, I mean, I grew up uh, with uh, Mark Knopfler, Dire Straits, mm -hmm. anything that Don Henley does, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the Eagles, mm -hmm. um, that type of music. I like music that is vocally focused and lyrically focused, uh, and that is probably um, the strength of my music mm -hmm. is I, I think the lyrics are a little bit different out there as far as how we write. And the music... Uh, has a classic sound to mm -hmm. it, but it's all original music. We just recently played an event, and uh, we play 90% original music. We only play one or two covers. Maybe mm -hmm. we played three covers all night. Mm -hmm. And the best compliment we got was a gentleman came up to us, and he thought we were playing covers that he had never heard before. Wow. And, yeah, yeah, and that was really, it was really positive feedback for what we were trying to do, right. you know, that it, that the music is uh, accessible enough, I was going to say commercial, but it's accessible enough mm -hmm. that people enjoy it, uh, they like to listen to the uh, to the lyrics, right. and it's gone over really well. So one of the things that strikes me when I listen to the music, it's, it, to me it has a, a feel like, I call it groove rock, because you can move to it, you know, it gets you, you know, it, the feet are tapping, you can dance to it, and um, and uh, I happened to have been at one of those events, uh, checking out the band, and there were little girls dancing. And the proprietor of the particular uh, establishment said, to, uh, said at that moment in time, he said, when you see kids dancing, you know you've got something. So you know, to add to that, that was, uh, that was one of those other things that I found very impressive. Thank you. 
So um, you also brought your band here with you uh, I today. I mean, we're all going to listen to the music here shortly, but why don't you go around the room and introduce some of your cohorts here and uh, yep. what they all do. And Go ahead. So I'm really grateful. I've been able to attract some very strong uh, professional, semi-professional musicians in the area. We have Addison Smith, who handles the uh, electric guitar work uh, on there. Uh, Addison has played and performed in a lot of... Uh, local bands in the area. They've won Battle of the Band awards in the Mid-Atlantic and he's a very accomplished, uh, very accomplished guitarist. On bass is Bruce Lipson. Bruce came hey. from the LA scene, uh, Austin, he's been all over, done a lot of session work, a lot of studio work. On keyboards is Dave, Dave G. Dave, hey, Dave. Uh, a lot of people in Montgomery County particularly will know Dave. He's a very, very accomplished uh, keyboard player. He plays with several bands in the area. You've probably heard Dave play uh, piano if you've been out to any of the live music events here. And we have Mike D. Uh, we imported from Hawaii. He came in from here and uh, uh, I don't know why he left Hawaii, but uh, he <laughs> ended up here, here. <laughs> and we're very, we're very fortunate that he's here and he handles the uh, percussion and the drum track for us. Well, thank you so much for introducing uh, the, introducing the band, and we're going to talk to each one of you a little bit too here in a minute. But uh, let's just kind of start out, and uh, you know, we have we have a few songs that we're going to talk about here today. So the first one that I have on my list is called "Angel Circuits Engaged," and my notes say that you it was the first song that you ever wrote, and everyone needs to turn to their angel circuit in the challenging times that we live in. So elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, um, you know, music is a calling and it's been, you know, I did it early in my life and then I kind of went into the business world and, and I don't think we're really expressing ourselves uh, unless we're really creating, you know, our higher selves. You can call it a left brain, right brain thing, whatever you want to do, but to me, um, I kind of saw what was going on with the planet and things that are going on there and it's like, you know what, angel circuit engaged, you know, when you... When you can engage the angel circuit inside of you, you can engage the higher self inside of you and bring that forth into the world. I think that's solely needed right now. So uh, it's about helping others. It's about helping perform miracles on whatever level that is. Uh, it could just be helping somebody uh, and not asking for anything in return all the way up to you know, making clouds disappear, right? You know, which by the way, you can do. Uh, so uh, that really was the first uh, that was the first song I wrote, and uh, we're going to perform that tonight. It's a little rocker. Okay, so give me a line in that song, and um, you might even, if you feel like breaking out into song, I always like to, you know, pull out a particular line that could really, you know, be White telling. wings uh, placed on the backs of a few, uh, bringing out, bringing those, helping out those that are new, gentle power not to be denied, uh, bringing it online in a perilous time. Okay, awesome. So. And the, the lyrics are very, um, how should I say, um, definitely different. You know, you don't hear those types of lyrics. It's poetic, 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 poetic lyrics. Um, sometimes, yeah, you have to take out the dictionary. <laughs> yeah, we're it's not right. writing hooks. You no, know? we're no. not writing uh, commerciality. Miss yeah. Taylor Swift has nothing to be concerned about. <laughs> you know, as far as my music is concerned, <laughs> it's not the genre that we're writing in. It's more poetic kind of rock lyrics, but it's got a good beat to it. Okay. Okay. We can rock. Well, thank you for telling us about that song.
next song, Baby Prime Became Baby Blue. And this one is about a beautiful young woman who struggled with supported mental health. And I guess it's uh, basically whatever somebody tells you, you then start to believe and it becomes your reality. Would that be Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, everything, everything in our life is con controlled by our thoughts and our beliefs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been part of my journey. It's just to understand that there really is nothing out there everything is an internal thought or everything's an eternal belief system or an idea, right? Mm -hmm. And that's been going through, you know, 12-step recovery and various courses, Course of Miracle, Course of Love and things like that. And you realize that your reality is, is simply uh, structured uh, based on your current belief or thought system. And you see somebody who, you know, everybody has little quirks that are involved, you know, I mean, where nobody is, nobody is normal. You know, uh, it, it, it doesn't exist. And if you have little things wrong with you, sometimes you can get a diagnosis, you know, something that might be a little quirky. Uh, somebody will give you a diagnosis. And then once we kind of latch on to that diagnosis, we believe that to be true. And then it actually, the belief of the diagnosis is what makes it real. Mm -hmm. It's not the, the diagnosis itself. It, it, it's cause versus effect, okay? The cause is the belief. The effect is the is the diagnosis, right? So there's a beautiful young girl, and, and you know there, she was fine, and you know she was just struggling a little bit, and she had gotten this uh, diagnosis, you know, and and here here she goes, you know. So baby prime became baby blue, you know. It's like she got a a diagnosis of depression, and you know she decided that that's what she was, and then you could kind of see it see it happening to her. So that's why I said uh, you were told everything. Mm -hmm. they say is true. Mm -hmm. The next one is, you know, you thought everything they say is true. Right. The third line is you believe everything they say is true, you right. know, because ultimately once you buy into the diagnosis, then you make that your reality that's out there. So, But it's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the band does a great job with this. I want to say one thing about, I appreciate the band's input on when I write my music, I write the basic chord structure. I have an idea of the melody line, and I write the lyrics. Okay, mm -hmm. I have some idea of the song, of the band arrangement, right? But I give the song to the band, mm -hmm. and it's really the musicianship of these guys. I don't tell them what to play. Right. You know, it's not like you know this is all charted out, and you know here's this and that. I mean, there's certain parts, lines that we have to run, but basically. I give the song to the band and then these guys take it and they turn it into a song, you right. know? Because if I'm just strumming it on guitar with some chords and I'm singing the lyrics, that's one thing, but that's not really a song. It doesn't become a song until you give it to your musicians and they take it and they make it, they make it a piece of music. real excited but seldom lies a chagrin smile a husky mask you were told everything they say is true they 
baby pride became And uh, now to our next song, um, Inventory. I like this one. So I listen to all, so just so everybody understands, I always listen to all of the music and intently listen to all of the music and I love all the songs that, we're, that you're going to be hearing today. Um, but Inventory is one of, one of my favorites for sure. But uh, part of it is it's because of you know, recovery, right? The story about recovery, mm -hmm. how you confront yourself, um, just, uh, you know, fearless and moral inventory of yourself, and you have to kind of do that in order to get through, you know, recovery. But to go ahead and talk about that song. I know it has some personal meaning. Yeah. So inventory is about taking a personal and moral inventory of ourselves, and and it's the only way you ultimately can deal with whatever issues you have that are inside of you and grow. You know, and there are a lot of paths to that. You know, twelve-step programs have what's called a four-step, which is searching and fearless moral inventory. Uh, great religions like Catholicism has confession, you know, uh, psychotherapy, counselors, you know, it's all really about identifying um, what the, again, what the root causes are that are causing whatever manifestation of disorder that you have and identifying those. And, and it's when you inventory those, when, when you put pencil to paper, it's, it, it's one thing to think about, it. oh, you know, I'm thinking about this or something that happened a long, long time. It's still rattling around in your brain, your subconscious, and when you put pen to paper, you know, or you write it down and you really confront it, 
in my mind, we hand medals out to people, you know, rightfully so, who, uh, you know, maybe charge a machine gun nest or do something, you know, heroic on the battlefield. But there is nothing more courageous than uh, a human being that is willing to look at his own or her own issues and stuff and confronting ourselves ultimately it takes the largest amount of courage of anything that's out there so uh, again it's a very nice song you know I don't want to get too heavy here but uh, it's really about my discovering and, and becoming self-aware of my issues and the inventory that I've had in order to evolve around that. You, you always you definitely share your personal story in your songs, tell your story in your songs, and what uh, and what ha what happens to grab you at that moment in time, and you know. Yeah, really I always recommend. I was helping a couple of kids when we did the the album in Nashville, and we came back, and these young kids wanted it. I just said, look, you have to write genuine, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to write from who you are and what your direct experience is. Otherwise, the music's not real, you know, and. When I write, I don't write for an objective. And so many people, I'm not knocking that, but so many people write for an objective. An objective is, okay, I'm going to write this song because I want it to be a hit, or I want it to be on you know, top 40 radio, or I want it to be the next country song, or I want to sell it to you know, uh, uh, another musician to perform. So you, you have an objective of why you're writing that song. right? I never do that, which is why my music is all over the map. These songs just kind of happen, and whatever, sometimes it's a rocker, you know, sometimes it's a ballad, sometimes it's, you know, an off-tempo thing. I don't really control or, or, or apply any rules mm -hmm. to where it will go, which is probably why it doesn't sound like a lot.
So very much uh, for sharing all that information and uh, the beautiful music that you put together that we're going to be hearing today. And, and thank you to our audience for once again watching our show, Liquid Sky. Again, I'm Gabrielle Wired with Red Dragon Music. And um, before we end, however, I actually want to ask you a couple more quick questions. Um, so tell me, where can, can the audience find you? Where, where can they link up with you to find your music and so on and so forth? We play in the, uh, we play in the uh, local areas. Uh, Facebook, C Wired Band, W-I-R-E-D, C-W-I-R-E-D Band. Uh, also, there's a website, C-W-I-R-E-D.com. Uh, first album called Ride Your Horses is on iTunes, C Space W-I-R-E-D. Thank you very much for watching our show, Liquid Sky. Once again, I'm Gabrielle Wired with Red Dragon Music, and hope you enjoyed this segment, and come back for more. Thanks. Bye.